um, on the, hopefully you have your box next to you, you know, your goodie box, your excitement box. It should be next to you. It has all your materials. It has your agenda and everything in it. So if you pull out that agenda, um, we're going to open up with um, Dr. John Osorio. He's going to only in the video, and then he has something to say. And so I, we couldn't bring you to the Lo'i, and this is the best we could do to bring the Lo'i to you. Okay, so I hope you really enjoy it. There will be other speakers who there is no video associated with them, but um, they will have PowerPoint presentations and you'll get to interact with them, which is really fun. Um, so without further ado, uh, what we're doing with the videos is we're having, we're going to show the videos first. And then the presenter will be online to answer questions that you may have. Okay. if there were no questions or, or maybe there, it would be embarrassing if everybody was like you know who are you and why are you here um, but go ahead it's really nice to see everyone yeah so feel free to unmute yourselves because everyone's in mute right now or chat it in the chat box hi i have a question oh hello yes aloha I, I'm from Maui and I'm just looking at the program right now and I have a burning question because the first thing that I saw is two triangles. And I guess that's the symbol for the online Malama Kumo 3.0, if I'm not mistaken, or as an icon symbol for the project. Can you explain us to um, more about the symbolisms of this uh, symbol that you're using? Actually, that, that question should be for me. I'm oh. the principal investi investigator for Project Ho'okui 3. Um, that was created, I developed it during Project Ho'okui 2. And uh, it symbolizes the overlap of secondary education towards post-secondary education. Because what we do is we we put students in uh, dual enrollment and early, early college programs um, before they graduate from high school. Um, there's there's more significance to that to it too, but um, I, I I don't want to cut into okay. uh, Kumu, John's, Kumu John's time. I'm I'm happy you brought that up. Um, and if anyone has a question or wants to say anything at all about um, about this program or about Hawaii uh, New please do interrupt me. I I, I wanted to say that the um, the focus of Ho'okui, which is essentially to uh, to bring high school students into contact with tertiary education with um, post, you know, with, with college education um, at an earlier age to really give them not just a familiarity with it, but the encouragement and the, and the skills and tools to succeed in this is really very much in keeping with um, traditional ways of, of education. So one of the things that we have seen um, in the West and in the United States, especially over the last 150 years, has been sort of this creation of these, um, these levels and, 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 and hierarchy of education. Um, that's, that it's, it's not just in, in the structure of our primary, you know, middle and, and, and high schools, and then this sort of separation 
um, from the colleges and the universities. There's also a hierarchy of, of education, PhD, MAs, BAs. And there's this sort of sense, right, in, in the way we conduct formal education in the West um, that really suggests that you earn your way to the top and that there are these divisions and that there are these, um, these levels that you achieve and that there's a group of people that are going to judge you and um, grade you and at some point you move into this, um, into this new status that allows you to turn around and judge and grade other people. Um, you know, indigenous education is, is not like that in the slightest. Indigenous, indigenous education really involves a relationship between um, the, the Kumu and, and, and the Haumana. Um, and, you know, there's a, a saying in our language, a'oaku um, teach, learn. There's an equivalency there. We learn as we teach. We teach um, as we learn. Um, the, the expectation is that students are, are moved according to their own time. And um, in, in indigenous and traditional education, it's, there's much more attention paid really to the capacities and the readiness of a student to move on rather than simply assume that having, you know, um, lived through the 11th grade and 12th grade that one is basically ready to graduate and assume other kinds of responsibilities. What I like about Malama Kumu is that as it blurs this line, it also prepares those of you who are teaching um, to pay closer attention to what it is you're doing. And, and that is something um, that I learned. It took me a long time to learn this. Um, to be really, really attentive of how much there was to learn from our students, to be really, really attentive to how much they bring um, as individuals in different households and with different genealogies and, and with knowledges that I simply did not possess, how much there was to learn from them. So, um, you know, sorry, I, I didn't give you really much of a chance to ask a question, but I think this, the idea of Ho'oku'i and um, really what we are essentially creating uh, within Hawaii Nuiake and in other indigenous study centers, um, the notion of really, really, really re-examining what teaching and professing means and um, really moving toward figuring out how to um, strengthen those relationships that have always existed between the young and old. And you'll notice that one of the things I said about, you know, uh, those of us who have been in this business from the beginning of the establishment of the school and these centers is that we are an older generation. Um, uh, the truth of the matter is and the, that the, the problems that we have helped create are going to only be met and managed um, by those that we have been teaching um, over these last 40 years. Um, okay, so I'm gonna read the chat box for you, um, Kumu. Oh, I, I can see the chat box. I just oh, okay. didn't see any so questions. All right, there we go. Another question. Okay. Uh, is your program related to the Hawaii Lifestyles program out of Hawaii Community College and UH Shilo on the Big Island? Um, so th this is to Ivalani. Uh, no, we, we aren't. Um, and I I'm not, I'm familiar with a number of different programs in Hilo. Kahaka Ula, which is UH Hilo's Hawaiian Studies, Hawaiian Language program. There's a teacher education program. And I'm not really familiar with um, so Hawaii Community College, um, I'm, I'm not familiar with this lifestyles program. I will say that um, that's another part of the um, problem with, you know, uh, contemporary Western education is that 
a lot of programs have been siloed. Um, there is um, and, and continues to be not a lot of um, conversation between uh, Manoa and other campuses, with the exception of some of the things that Willie Kauai is doing through Native Hawaiian Student Services. And I'm sure he'll address that. Um, the bridge programs that he has helped create with a number of community colleges. Um, I have another question. Uh, can you share, your, this is from Emilio. Um, can you share your journey or path to where you are today? Is this what you wanted to do when you were younger? Um, when I was younger, I just wanted to be a musician and I just wanted to be a recording um, and, you, you know, like a star. I, I, I had this vision of playing concerts. I had this vision of playing in front of other people and recording. We call them albums back then. It's really interesting these are like vinyl discs are about this big and they travel up well anyway. So I had this, this dream of doing that. And so when I left high school, um, instead of really applying myself in college, I kept dropping out of college every time there was an opportunity to, to sing or to perform or to get a gig. And I kept doing that for a few years until I finally settled into really just performing for about 10 years. I didn't really expect to do anything else um, with my life in my 20s. Um, but when I felt I was getting really old for that gig and there was no, um, there was no pension, no life insurance, um, no health insurance, and started to come back to school, I, I really quickly um, realized that the only thing I wanted to do was to continue to be in front of an audience, which meant teaching. And I don't know about you guys, um, but if, if you are a teacher and you don't love audiences, you, you might be in the wrong profession. You kind of have to love the challenge of getting those little rascals to listen, to stop moving around, to behave, and, and more than that, to be inspired, right? I played music because I wanted to inspire people to think about life and Hawaii differently. I teach for the same damn reason. So um, I'm really happy that, um, I'm really happy that I had a musical career, uh, but it's, it's not, I mean, this is what I was born to do. And I didn't know it at the time. Um, I'm gonna answer a few more questions. My language. And we have a, a, a wonderful mahalo from uh, Ha'amauliola, Iona, Aloha. Um, the credits from um, community colleges and UH Hilo would, would transfer fa fairly seamlessly here through, so long as they are essentially the same courses, um, English 100, Hawaiian 101, 102, 201, 202. And where Hawaiian Studies 107 is taught, um, I think we have articulation with every campus. Uh, and then this last question. N no, I cannot answer this last question about ancient Hawaii and Lo'i protocol, but if you get um, Makahiapo, um, in front of you today, uh, you should ask him this question, Nicole. Um, there are, in my, in my mind, two fundamental um, foundations to what we do in Hawaii no Yakea. One is Olelo and the other is Aina. Um, the, these are the things that drive our analysis. These are the things that drive our research. These are the things that drive our passion for teaching. Um, I am not fluent in Maka'olalo uh, Hawaii, and that's despite the fact that I have taken years and years and years of the language. Um, but I've gotten better 
even just in the last five years and really focusing and taking coursework, composing in Hawaiian, using the language um, and being able to speak and even teach um, in that language for short bursts of time. But the aina and, 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 and the lo'i, um, that is an area that I haven't um, really participated in, uh, mostly because it's really hard work. And I grew up, in, when I was growing up, my parents used weeding and gardening as a punishment for bad behavior. Um, so I associate those two things in my mind. Um, you should really talk to people who really love the land, as Makahiapo does and has such um, deep knowledge of this. Um, I think that's the end of the questions. And Actually, uh, um, Kumu John, I, I, I wanted to ask in person instead of typing it, is that okay? Oh yeah. Okay, uh, aloha. Um, aloha. Mahalo for all your work and, and the sacrifices that you made on your journey to be here and, and um, to allow myself and, and everybody else that's been able to cite you, your work and kind of um, use that as a foundation uh, to answer questions and try to figure out and inform what we do from here. Um, so I wanted to layer like <laughs> my question, um, one that's gonna set a question that maybe later on you could help me out with, um, cause I, I heard you talk about your journey and would love to hear how you might reimagine like the CTE career technical, um, forget what the E is for, and like the CCCR stuff. So like the, uh, the tracking of our students from um, high school into profession or into college, um, how you might reimagine that. But my, my main question uh, would be um, with all the work and research that you've looked at, uh, how you might see the COVID pandemic today as an opportunity to reset um, and reestablish connections to, um, to I don't know, traditional sources of knowledge production that um, uh, Kanaka had been severed from. Um, but basically maybe to reset the education system, uh, kind of you, 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 you mentioned the contrast between um, indigenous education and, and Western education. But like, I guess my question is, is how the COVID pandemic might uh, offer an opportunity to reset. Well, first of all, thank you for the question. I, th I think it's a wonderful question. Um, and it's something that I talk about and think about a lot these days. Um, it, it has to be clear to everybody that the future is really, really uncertain, um, partly because of COVID, but also because of climate change. Um, there is not, if, if people really think that there's a return to, um, to normal, to the normal that we knew um, a year ago, what year is it? Yeah, a year ago or two years ago, uh, they're, they're really kidding themselves, in my opinion. Um, mm -hmm. Everything is uh, everything is going to be transformed. We're already transforming the way people relate to one another, the way we socialize, and yes, the way we conduct education. But here's the thing. Hawaiians have been doing this ever since contact. You know, the, that whole record of the 19th century, the 1800s, one epidemic after another, you know, basically taking the lives of, in, in some cases, 15,000, 10,000 people within the space of a year. And it didn't just happen once, it happened over and over and over again. And if you look at what the, the kingdom government did, what, what the chiefs did, what Kaui Kiauli did, what Liho Liho, Alexander Liho Liho and Emma and, 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 and their successors did to deal with that continuing de depopulation. You, you have to recognize that they understood that there was no going back to the traditional system of chiefs and Konohiki and, you know, myriads of Maka'ainana working the land. They had to, to work with a different reality. And so they reform the government. They create constitutional monarchies. They, they encourage, and in fact, they require literacy. Um, they build a hospital. Um, they, the, the things, and, and even the mahele, even the decision to privatize land, because the old land system, which, which had a lot of land and very few people, 
simply was not going to work to create prosperity or abundance. So they, they do the Mahele, which many of us people, many of us feel was, was a, a huge mistake. It was still an effort by the leaders to take, uh, to, to reform, to reform the society, reform the culture, and, and, and really try to get people to survive. If leadership doesn't do that today, it simply tells me that they're not up to the kinds of standards of leadership that we were fortunate enough to have um, at the turn of the 19th century. So that means, and, and, and by the way, um, I don't believe that it has to be that way. And while we watch the state falter, certainly, and watch the federal government um, really sim seem to fall apart because of their own internal contradictions, I tell you all that the leadership has to come from education. It has to come from education and from educators. It has to come from you. You know things. You know how to teach uh, young people. You have the ability to learn about um, and, 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 and to observe. You're scientists. You've been trained as scientists too. I know this. You can observe. Um, you can design curriculum that can, let me put it this way. We can't really predict what the economy is going to be like over the next two or three years. We can predict that tourism is not going to come back in a hurry. And we can say with some um, satisfaction that that may be a good thing. So if we can't really predict what that economy is going to be founded on, then we have to train students not to occupy jobs, you guys, but to create jobs. Do you, do you understand? We have to educate students to be creative, nimble, innovative, daring, um, able to work with other people, uh, to be leaders. That's actually what education needs to be. Um, and and it, it should have been this anyway. We should have been making this transition, transition anyway. I think that COVID and climate change speed this up. They offer us an opportunity to really transform form what, what education is. And um, I wish I was 40 years younger and starting this journey with all of you. I mean that. Mahalo, Kumu. Kumu John. Yes. Aloha. Mahalo for that. Mahalo Nui. Um, th this, what you're talking about, you know, like re-examining what teaching and professing means, like the, the relationship between the students and the teachers, I feel like that's really what my students are craving with their relationships with their kumu. You know, like that kind of like westernized, you know, like lecture style thing. It's just like, it's never worked. It's still not working. You know, that those relationships with their kumu, that feedback, that interaction is really what um, I think they're really searching for. Um, is it is it okay if we take this video and share it? I feel like this um, with our Hamana. Yes, it's okay. Um, I, I I believe I have permission um, to have done this with the with the um, with the Oli at the beginning, which I did not compose. That was composed by Kiave Lopes and mm -hmm. other Hawaiian language professors. You might want to skip over that part, and I will confer with Kiave and make sure it's okay for uh, that to be shared. Mikina, mahalo nui. Okay. So are we good? I know you guys have to get on with other things and you have some wonderful presenters today. I'm looking forward to coming back in and, and, and joining you, but I have to give ukulele lessons to my son and nephew uh, this and grandson this morning. <laughs> it's, yes. Bye. Well, so, so Lisa is is um is this being recorded then? Because yeah, that that was a nice little nugget that I would love to share as well. <laughs> yes, it is being recorded, and it will be available to everyone um, after today. So um, and feel free to share it with your students. That's fine. Um, Kumu John, thank you. Mahalo nui loa for doing this early in the morning on a Saturday, 
and being, you know, and letting us videotape you and the low E and all that good stuff. Um, I it was really, really wonderful. It's, it's a great journey, Lisa. And we get to do this for another three years, apparently. Yes. Um, so I look forward to it. News, um, Project Ho'okui got uh, funding again. So we're going to do Project Ho'okui 4. And it's called Ohana Lokahi. So we're going to focus in on uh, the families. It will, it'll still be the same core foundation of Ho'okui, but there's going to be the new added addition of focusing on uh, Ohana because we all know that's like critical to success as well. But mahalo nui loa for coming. And we'll see you again later in the afternoon. Yep. I'm okay. sure that I'll be back with my daughters learning how to weave. So I maybe <laughs> I get a chance to come in on, and, and, and hear Kelly. So all of you take care. Um, I'll try to get back as soon as I can. Aloha. Mahalo. Thank you so much.